Oh, good day. Welcome to Farming Life Australia. Today is Sunday, the 28th of April 2019, and I had a neighbour ring me, and he, another neighbour's in trouble over here. They bogged their backhoe, and it's in a really bad spot. It's been raining, and any of you that have been watching my channel know it's been raining for months, but where he drove in, or you know, they don't know the country, they've just got the place and they've just simply driven in somewhere where you just wouldn't go even in the dry, let alone the wet. So <clears throat> they've been at it since Friday and they've got a grader this morning and oh, they had that little tractor and and uh, four wheel drives and stuff and that wouldn't look at it. Then they got that uh greater to try and help anyway here we are down at the bog site and as you can see she's well and truly bogged she's right down on the to the mud on the ass and when i had a look at it i just thought no way we're going to get this out look at the country it is just saturated um the other fella went round behind it and he sunk up to about his uh, halfway up his chest. That's how wet and boggy it is where he's bogged. And I just didn't think there was any way. The main problem with this is that the ground's wet. And there's no traction. And that grader, if it was dry, it'd pull that out of there like nothing. But it can't get any traction. Oh, they're a good strong machine, make no doubt about it. But it's wet and it's just got those sort of tyres and they won't push it just pushes the top off the ground the grass and that's the end of it and that little tractor's you know it's it's all right but it's 60 horsepower and it's not gonna you know the big problem is is just getting traction um we've got plenty of horsepower that's not the issue but the ground is just there's just nothing to grip onto anyway we're going to do our best and have a go I, see how it happens but I was very doubtful at this stage anyway we moved the the gear that was already there that had already dug up the ground we moved that up on the ground that was not dug up you know fresh ground so it wasn't sitting in the mud and slop that the tires had already made plus also that little tractor when it when it started to go would be actually going downhill because it'd be going in its old tire tracks so we made a plan and decided we were going to hook all the machines together and wasn't helping that it was raining as well but you know everything was sort of against us then I jumped on my tractor and it wouldn't start you just couldn't believe it we had a comedy of errors so we tried to jump start it but the blokes jump started had little tiny weeny thin wires and that just wouldn't work so we hooked up the other little Fiat onto the front of mine and literally moved it about a foot and uh, it started straight away. Um, yeah, I know what caused it, why it does it. And um, if you would have waited half an hour till the hydraulic pressure went down, it would have started it with the starter motor as well. But we didn't have half an hour to want to waste. See, it's going already. Yeah, anyway, so... Now we've got that going, we can um, put all the machines back and hook them all together and see what we can do. And just at the critical time, of course, it starts to really rain. The four-wheel drive tractor would have been a lot better for this, but unfortunately it's over in the paddock and with a baler hooked to it, and it would have been a lot of buggerising around. The day would have been gone before I got organised. I've also... This bit of filming, I'm obviously not filming it. It's my camera, but I've got to thank Cooper Hill for actually filming this for me. Thanks a lot for that, Cooper. Anyway, we got going, and once I worked out to put the diff lock in, which I should have started with, of course, uh, we actually did move it. And once we, once I actually was able to move it, the other machines were able to keep it going pretty well. Uh, you can see here now, they only really needed me just to actually get it up out of that hole. Once I got it out of the hole, 
the two other machines could could um, pull it along. I just stayed on the front, obviously in case for some reason it stopped again. But no, it was once once we actually broke the suction and got it up out of the hole, probably a, the first couple of metres in, I wasn't required anymore. I, I was surplus to requirements. But and actually, if you look here, um, it's under its own steam now. It's the the grader isn't actually towing it anymore anyway. So I bet he sighed a sigh of relief because imagine being there Friday, Saturday, and half a Sunday, and your machine stuck like that with no end in sight. You'd be a bit worried, wouldn't you? Anyway, we undid all the chains and run around and got everything sorted. Here I've just got to get the chain off so I can get up the hill. I don't want to park it on that steep hill. It doesn't look steep here, but it actually is. And surprisingly, both those old tractors, even though they're both only two-wheel drive, went up that hill with no hesitation whatsoever. And yet here we've got the grader, and he was admittedly where he's going up to the old proper road, but it wouldn't even look like going up that hill. That's the fourth attempt he had at it. And he went back and had a really good run up and it just wouldn't go up that hill. You know, that's because, only because of the tyres, I'd say. You know, it's it's no, no bad reflection on the machine. It's just the conditions just aren't right. And you see here, it's actually going sideways down that hill because it's just skating like it's on ice. Anyway, there's a bit, there's a spot further over where he's nowhere near as steep and he got a good run up and he was able to get up that, no worries. Plus also, I think the run-up probably flung a fair bit of the old dirt out of the tyres, the mud, and that made it better. Plus, um, it hasn't been chewed up. That's the end of this video. Thanks a lot for watching. We'll catch you next time.